Hello and welcome to my channel, where we compare weapons from movies and video games to their real-life versions. Here we debunk myths and uncover interesting facts about weapons. In this video, I'm going to talk about sword-off shotguns again. You've definitely seen them a lot in some action movies or video games, and some of you might have even tried using them in real life. But it turns out that in many countries, this weapon is considered illegal or there are serious restrictions on using it. So what could possibly go wrong with a sword-off shotgun that they were banned while normal shotguns were not? If you're interested in knowing the truth, please put a like and watch this video till the end. I've already made a cool video that covers the epic history of a weapon you won't want to miss. But before we dive in, let's take a quick trip down memory lane. It all started in Italy, where clever shepherds used a Lupara, a shotgun with a shortened barrel of just 30 centimeters, to protect their herds from predators and danger. The name Lupura comes from the Latin word for wolf. How cool is that? Fast forward to America in the 19th century, where the sword-off shotgun became a total legend. Bankers came up with the idea to arm mail coaches with coach guns, which quickly became known as the coachman's gun. And boy, did it work. It was so successful that it was even adopted by cavalry during the Civil War and later by sheriffs as a trusty weapon. But like all awesome things, it caught the attention of some unsavory characters, from run-of-the-mill robbers to the notorious mafia. So why did sword-off shotguns end up being banned in so many countries? Let's find out together. But it's not only Italy that was involved in sword-off shotguns history. Let's start with Russia, and of course, we'll be talking about the 90s. During those times, street crime didn't take seriously the idea of an ordinary citizen carrying a pistol, because instead of carrying a real gun, many people had gas, traumatic, and especially airsoft pistols that they used for self-defense. Some of them were quite powerful, but more often than not, their owners couldn't use them because they relied solely on the psychological effect of displaying the weapon. So if drawing a pistol failed to scare off your criminal, you could find yourself in serious trouble. And then enter the sword-off shotgun, the unexpected hero of street defense. Just the sight of it could make even the most hardened criminals think twice. Plus, it had a pretty good success rate at resolving conflicts without the need for firing a single shot. But as with all good things, there were some downsides. Soviet literature and cinema, along with the movie Brother, gave the sword-off shotgun a bad rep and criminalized it. So Russian legislation started to limit its use with various laws and regulations. For instance, the federal law on weapons requires civilian long-barreled firearms to be at least 80 centimeters long, with the barrel and receiver combined not less than 50 centimeters. In short, a sword-off double-barreled shotgun or magazine rifle is totally illegal in Russia. And that's how the sword-off shotgun became both a hero and a villain in Russia. Moreover, there's another law that puts a limit on sword-off shotgun production because sawing off the barrel of a shotgun is now considered as the illegal manufacturing of a firearm. So, what's the deal with sword-off shotguns in the US? In the United States, the National Firearms Act, or NFA, regulates the possession, sale and transfer of sword-off shotguns as well as other firearms. The NFA defines a sword-off shotgun as a shotgun with a barrel length less than 18 inches and an overall length less than 24 inches. The NFA requires that anyone who makes, sells or possesses a sword-off shotgun must obtain a special tax stamp from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives or ATF. Additionally, the individual must undergo a background check and pay a $200 tax for each firearm. This tax stamp is difficult to obtain and as a result, sword-off shotguns are relatively rare and expensive. Without the proper tax stamp, owning or manufacturing a sword-off shotgun is illegal in the United States. Even if you do have the tax stamp, sword-off shotguns have certain restrictions on their use. It is illegal to use a sword-off shotgun for hunting as well as any other activity that is not considered lawful self-defense or lawful sporting purposes. 
it is also illegal to transport or store a sawed-off shotgun in an unlawful manner, such as transporting it loaded or concealing it without a permit. It all started back in the 1930s. Bad guys thought it was cool to hide sawed-off shotguns under their coats or in their briefcases. These sneaky guns were particularly nasty up close since they tended to spray their shot all over the place. And just like in Russia, they started to gain popularity in gang wars. Hollywood even jumped on the bandwagon and made them look cool in gangster movies. But that was before people and government officials realized that Hollywood can be pretty creative with the truth. So, in 1934, sword off shotguns and other short firearms like machine guns and short barrel rifles got a serious smackdown. To own one, you had to pay a hefty $200 tax and get the government's approval. Back then, $200 was worth more, like closer to $2,000 today. But after almost 100 years, the tax hasn't changed much and $200 isn't that crazy of an amount nowadays. So how different is a sawed-off shotgun from a normal double-barreled shotgun? And what's so bad and dangerous about them? Let's start by considering that a double barrel shotgun, in and of itself, is a very powerful weapon with a lot of kinetic force behind each shot. If you saw off the barrels, the gun becomes the size of a pistol, but all that kinetic energy doesn't just disappear. When designing any firearm, engineers always try to ensure that the weight and balance of the weapon help to absorb some of the recoil. But if you cut off the barrels and stock, that delicate balance is thrown off and the tremendous recoil could end up being a real pain in the ass for the person using it. At the very least, you should seriously hurt your hand and at worst, the gun could fly out of your grip and shoot in a completely different direction, potentially hurting innocent bystanders. Cutting the barrels off a shotgun also significantly reduces its range and accuracy. The longer barrels are designed to concentrate the energy of the gunpowder gases in a narrow space and propel the shot out of the barrel. But when you saw off the barrels, a lot of energy is lost and the shot spreads out in all directions. That means you can only really hit a target effectively from very close range. Overall, sword off shotguns are illegal for a reason. There are some very legitimate safety concerns to consider as bystanders can easily get hurt. That's why these shotguns are restricted in many countries such as Canada, UK, Australia and many others. Now let's take a look at which games have featured the sword off shotgun and how realistically they depict its properties. Of course, we all played Stalker and I'm sure that when you hear sword off shotgun, it immediately brings up images from this game. The sword off shotgun is featured in all installments of the game, but for the sake of example, Let's take a look at Shadow of Chernobyl. In the game, this weapon is capable of firing different types of cartridges, but let's face it, it's just a cut down grandpa shotgun. The game files list the shooting range as 50 meters, but in reality, the actual effective range of the weapon is not more than 5 meters. As for reloading, it looks pretty simple and realistic in the game, but in reality, no one instantly loads two cartridges into the magazine in one second. And as we already mentioned, the Sword of Shotgun and Stalker have become so intertwined in the gaming community that it's unlikely the developers of Stalker 2 won't include this legendary weapon in the game. Do you know of any games in which the Sword of Shotgun behaves in a way that's not quite realistic compared to real life? Let us know in the comments.